is an auxiliary degree known as the Heroes of 76. And it is the Heroes of 76 of the National Soldiers presenting this program today. You see, dressed as our fellow military officers probably would have been in the late 1700s. The time when our story begins. As Masons, we are proud of American heritage and have been counted among the leaders of our country for more than 200 years. We believe you will enjoy this program. Now, in our minds, we're all going to take a trip back in time, over 200 years as a matter of fact. If you haven't already guessed, our topic for today is the building of the American flag. We see it every day of our lives, floating majestically from the top of the flagstaffs located at city, county, state, and federal buildings, welcoming us at the schools we attend, flying proudly from business buildings, small and large, on bumper stickers, window decals, and lapel buttons in our in our classrooms, we pledge allegiance to it every morning. Yet, how much do we really know about our flag? Where it came from, what it signifies, how it all began. For the next few minutes, we're going to talk about just that, the building of the flag of our country. To start with, what is a flag anyway? One definition of a flag that I particularly like was written by Sir Edward Hanley of England, who wrote, a moth-eaten rag on a warm, worm-eaten pole does not seem likely to stir a man's soul. Tis the deeds that were done neath that moth-eaten flag when the pole was a staff and the rag was a flag. A flag is a symbol of a group of people united in some common association all through national flags as we know them today. Our fairly recent development, <coughs> symbols of one kind or another were used in warfare from the beginning of record time over 3,000 years ago. King Solomon referred to armies with banners. The flags flown by our Revolutionary War forefathers were all different. They indicated their struggles with the wilderness of a few la new land. Beavers, pine trees, rattlesnakes, anchors, and other types of insignia were mottos such as hope, liberty, appeal to heaven, or don't tread on me, were attracted to the early revolutionary flags of America. With that background, let us now begin. The 28th President of the United States was Woodrow Wilson. And he once said, and I quote, this flag which we honor and under which we serve is the emblem of our country, our power, our thought, and our purpose as a nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choices are ours. It floats with majestic <laughs> silence above the hosts that execute those choices, whether in peace or in war, and yet, Though silent, it speaks to us. Speaks to us of the past, of the men and women who went before us, and of the records they wrote upon it." Unquote. Show. When our flag is folded, it forms a triangle, which helps to remind us that our government is formed in three independent bodies. The executive branch, consisting of the President of the United States and his cabinet. The legislative branch, consisting of the Congress, made up of the senators and representatives from each state. And the judicial branch, consisting of the Supreme Court and the many federal courts throughout the nation. In an average, uh, in an average size flag, there are 13 folds, which could remind us of the original 13 colonies. All are surrounded by the blue field to remind us that we are, as we say in our Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God. We have here a framework. We have named it the Constitution, the framework upon which our United States rests. Through our first stars and stripes preceded the Constitution, since we believe our flag is a symbol of the principles set forth in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, 
and the Bill of Rights. It seems a perfect name for the foundation on which to build our flag. Although our flag had at least 13 stripes from late 1775 onwards, the number of stripes took on new meaning after the Revolution. As the original 13 states ratified the Constitution, we now show you the order by date in which those first 13 states ratified the Constitution. Now, let us start building our flag. The first strike. The first stripe in our flag is red and stands for valor and loyalty. We have often proved we possess these qualities in great abundance. The first stripe goes at the top of our flag. It represents Delaware, the diamond state, which was the first colony to ratify the Constitution in 1787. The second stripe is white, symbolizing purity and innocence. Americans have always felt that these were important qualities. The second stripe belongs to Pennsylvania, the Keystone State. As the third stripe goes in place, we may be, remind you that the name Old Glory was first given our flag by a ship's captain in 1831. His name was William Driver of the brig Charles Dockett. This strike represents New Jersey, the, the Garden State, which was the third and last colony to approve the Constitution in 1787. <coughs> the following year, 1788, Eight colonies ratified the Constitution, starting with Georgia, which is known as the Empire State. And it was the fourth colony to approve the Constitution. And as her stripe is fitted into our pattern, Let me mention that Old Glory was first carried at the Battle of Brandywine on September 11, 1777. As the fifth strike, representing Connecticut, the Constitution State, goes in place, you may be interested to know that on January 28, 1788, our flag first flew over foreign territory at Nassau in the Bahamas Islands. And it was the French Admiral, Lamont Piquet, who gave our flag its first foreign salute on February 14, 1788. Now, now we come to the sixth stripe, which represents Massachusetts, the Bay State. It was here that the Boston Tea Party took place, where Paul Revere made his famous midnight ride and where the Battle of Bunker Hill was fought. Next, we put the seventh stripe in place. This seventh stripe represents Maryland, the old line state, the blue canton. Oh. The blue canton in the upper left hand corner of the five was always a basic part of our flag. And the first seven stripes butt up against the blue canton. South Carolina is next, and as her eighth stripe is added to our flag, let me remind you that our flag stands for national independence and sovereignty. It is the flag of more than 300 million plus free people firmly united. South Carolina, South Carolina is known as the Plamento State. <coughs> The ninth state is rather to ratify the Constitution was New Hampshire in the Northeast. And that's just how our nation and our flag grew. From the farthest limits of the American colonies, our flag gave hope to 
Our flag gave hope to all the people that freedom would never perish. New Hampshire is known as the Granite State. The 10th strike represents a cautious colony that delayed approval of the Constitution until they were certain that the Bill of Rights would be a part of that guarantee of liberty. And only then did Virginia, the oldest of the colonies and often referred to as the mother state, ratify the Constitution. Virginia has been nicknamed the Old Dominion State. <clears throat> In July 1788, New York, the Empire State, became the 11th state. She truly, she truly symbolizes hope, for it was here at a later time that most of our early immigrant citizens first saw the shores of their new country as they entered New York Harbor and saw the Statue of Liberty, symbolizing hope for a new life. In November 1790, 1789, by an overwhelming vote, North Carolina, North Carolina joined the, the Tar, Heel, Tar Heel State, approved the Constitution, and joined her neighbors in the new union, and she represented it on our flag by the 12th strike on our flag. Finally, in 1790, by a plurality of just one vote, small but proud, Rhode Island, known as Little Rhodey, took her place in the Union, and we placed the red 13th stripe at the bottom of our flag for her. Through not, though not generally known, the first American flag containing the 13 stripes had in the upper left-hand corner the British Union flag the canton with its crosses of St. George. That's the red, that's the red cross. And St. Andrew, that's the white cross, showed our relationship with the mother country of Great Britain. This flag, which is called the Union flag, or sometimes the continental colors, was ordered by General George Washington in January 1776 to be hoisted at Charleston, Massachusetts in honor of the creation of the Continental Army, though it was intended to be and was seen as the flag of the United States, not just the flag of the Army. <coughs> Excuse me. This flag was used as many, on many occasions before the war, 1777. On June 14th of that year, the day we still celebrate its Flag Day, the Continental Congress, meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, authorized our first official flag by entering into the record of Congress, one sentence with no introduction and no explanation, resolved that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. This resolution by the Congress left unanswered questions of size, shape, arrangement of these stars, of the number of points that each star must have, because communications in those days was very slow. These decisions didn't always come to the attention of the people who were making flags as a result. There were many variations of the design, although modern historians agree that Francis Hopkins, a congressman from New Jersey, who also signed the Declaration of Independence for that state, designed our American flag. Tradition still credits Betsy Ross with sewing our first stars and stripes in her Philadelphia home. And the design of the five pointed stars in this arrangement could have been hers. The flag you now see has come to be known as the Betsy Ross flag. The circle of stars denotes the perfect perpetuate of the nation's continuancy, the ring being the symbol of eternity. This is how our first Stars and Stripes was arranged at the beginning of our great nation. It took the states only over two years to ratify the Constitution, Constitution, but we must remember that the horseback communications of those days was much slower than today's telephone 
Actually, 29 months were required to acquaint the 13 colonies with the terms of the Constitution and obtain their approval. The stars were put on in the order that each state ratified the Constitution. 1787, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. 1788, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, and New York. 1789, North Carolina. 1790, Rhode Island. Two more strikes and we'll Additional stars and stripes were added to the flag in 1795 to recognize additional states that had joined the Union. Vermont in 1791 and Connecticut in 17, uh, Kentucky, I'm sorry, Con Kentucky in 1792. Vermont is known as the Green Mountain State and Kentucky as the Bluegrass State. The flag you now see is the Star Spangled Banner. It figured in many stirring events. It inspired Francis Scott Key to write what has become our national anthem. It was the first flag to be flown over a fortress of the old world when Lieutenant O'Bannon of the Marine Corps and Midshipman Mann of the Navy raised it above our stronghold in Tripoli on April 27, 1805. It was our ensign at the Battle of Lake Erie and it was flown by General Jackson at New Orleans. Fearing that too many stripes would spoil the true design of the flag, Congress passed a law, and President James Monroe signed the bill on April 4th, 1880, 1818, returning the flag to its original design of 13 stripes by stating that the flag of the United States be 13 horizontal stripes, alternate red, white, a white star to be added to the blue field upon the admission of each new state. The new star to be added on the 4th of July, following the admission of that new state. Between our first 13 star, 13 strike flag, and our 50 star flag of today, there have been 26 official changes in the arrangement of the stars. It would be too awkward to show you all 20, to show you all 26 official changes, but please watch and listen to the roll call of the remaining states as their stars are added to the blue field. Now, you adults, if, if you can remember your history lesson, I'll give you some questions and you can answer the yellow up. I've given you the nicknames of the first 15 states and now I'm going to depend on you guys to give me the nicknames of the remaining states. If you know that state's nickname, call it out, and let's see how many of them you remember. Number 16, in 1796, Tennessee. Number 17, 1803, Ohio. That's the star. I didn't have any. Okay, well, somebody said Buckeye State. Okay, 18, 18, 18, 12, 18, 12, Louisiana, Louisiana, the Pelican State, 19, 18, 16, Indiana, number 20, 1817, Mississippi, you've got them growing here in the metropolis, Magnolia State, number 21, 1818, Illinois, the Prairie State, 
Number 22, 1819, Alabama. The Cotton State. Number 23, 1820, Maine. The Pine Tree State. Number 24, 1821, Missouri. There you go. Number 25, 1836, Arkansas. The Wonder State. Number 26, 1837, Michigan. The Wolverine State. Number 27, 1845, Florida. Sunshine. There you go, Sunshine State. And number 28, Texas. There you go, thank you. Number 29, 1846, Iowa. Hawkeye State, number 30, 1848, Wisconsin. The Badger State, number 31, 1850, California. There you go, thank you. Number 32, 1858, Minnesota. The Gopher State, number 33, 1859, Oregon. The Beaver State, number 34, 1861, Kansas. The Sunflower State, number 35, 1863, West Virginia. The Panhandle State, number 36, 1864, Nevada. Anybody been in Nevada? The Silver State. Number 37, 1867, Nebraska. The Cornhusker State. Number 38, 1876, Colorado. The Central Centennial State. Number 39, 1889, North Dakota. This one I did not know. The Flicker Tail State. The flicker tail state. I never heard of a flicker tail, so I don't know what a flicker tail. That's a beaver. That's a beaver. I don't know. It says flicker tail, so I don't know. Number forty, South Dakota. The coyote state. Number forty-one, Montana. The treasure state. And number forty-two, Washington. The Evergreen, Evergreen State. Oh, I do like Seattle. What you, year was the Evergreen? Well, there's an Evergreen in this brochure. Number 43, 1890, Idaho. The Gem State. And number 44, Wyoming. The Equality State. Number 45, 1896, was Utah. The Beehive State. Number 46, 1907. Oklahoma, the Sooner State, number 47, 1912, New Mexico, the Land of Enchantment, and 48, Arizona, the Grand Canyon State, number 49, 1959, Alaska, the Last Frontier, and finally, in 1950, 1960, Hawaii. <laughs> Aloha State. And there you see our flag of today in all of its glory. I am the flag of the United States of America. Two, though I was never an orphan, I was adopted by the Continental Congress in 1777 and became the national emblem of a nation newly born on this continent, fighting desperately for survival and disdain to bring to all mankind a new concept of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In the form of an or another, I have been many places and witnessed many events in our American history. I saw the signal that started that midnight ride of Paul Revere, and I was told there there, when they fired the shot heard around the world, I saw Molly Pitcher take the cannon 
swathed from the hands of her dead husband and helped carry on the fight freedom. And I rode with Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys. I was there when General George Washington became commander in chief and I felt the biting cold at Valley Forge and gave comfort to the tired and hungry Continental Army. I was flown above the decks of old iron sights and from the mass of the Yankee and the China Clippers. I was there in the late twilight at Fort McHenry and inspired Francis Cop Key to write the Star Spangled Banner, now our national anthem. And I blazed the trail west with Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, Lewis and Clark. I was carried through the halls of Montezuma and the shores of Tripoli. I fell to the ground at Cluster's last stand, and there were no friendly hands left to pick me up. I galloped up the slopes of San Juan Hill with Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. I stayed with the boys in World War I until it was over, over there, and was with them on the battlefield of the Mary, of the yeah, um, Chateau, Cary, St. Matthew, and Argonne Forest. I saw many of the youths and manhood of our nation fall and lie still in death. They had given their last full measure of devotion, and the war was over for them now. But I have kept my lonely watch over their graves, and have stayed to watch the poppies grow between the crosses, row one row, in Flanders Field. I was raised by six brave men during the hell of Iwo Jima, and I sank beneath the waves with the four heroic chaplains who went down with their ship to honor glory. <coughs> I probably waved over our troops fighting to keep the peace in Korea, Vietnam, the hot deserts of the Middle East, and I've been carried to the North Pole, to the South Pole, yes, and even to the moon. These events have not come without cost. Throughout our short history as a nation, when danger was threatened, millions of Americans have left their homes and families to defend me and the nation for which I stand, some never to return. Yes, they are here wrapped forever within my soul, for their purity is remembered in my stripes of white, their blood has given me stripes of red, their souls are cradled in my stars, and their courage embedded in my blue. I am many things to many people. I am an inseparable link to the, in the chain that binds men to God and country. I am called the red, white, and blue, the Star Spangled Banner the Stars and Stripes, but I am most commonly known by a nickname given to me by an old sea captain who called me, Oh Glory. At this moment, while I fly high in turbulent times, men and women from nations around the world are still trying to reach my shores to touch and stand beside me. A symbol of liberty, a light of humanity, an emblem of man's faith, a beacon shining into the darkness, and here I will always be for I am the stars and stripes forever. I am the glory. The National Sojourner's toast to the flag will be given by Brother Tom Tanner. Here's to the red of it. There's not a thread of it. No, nor the shred of it, and all the shred of it. From foot, foot to head, but heroes bled for it. Face steel, lead for it. Precious blood shed for it, bathing it red. Here's to the light of it, thrilled by the sight of it, who knows the right of it, but feels the might of it. Through day and night, womanhood care for it, man made manhood dare for it. Purity pray for it, keeps it so white. Here's to the blue of it, beauteous view of it, Heavenly hue of it, star spangled and dew of it. Constant and true, diadems gleam for it, 
states stand supreme for it. Liberty's beam for it. Brightens the blue. Here's to the whole of it. Stars, stripes, and pole of it. Body of blue, body of soul of it. Old and the roll of it. Shine, sun shining through. Hearts in accord for it. Swear by the sword of it. Thanks the Lord, thank the Lord for it. Red, white, and blue. stand. Would you please stand? Place your right hand over your heart and join with us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag. Oh, oh, Excuse me. Republic 